Hello, good afternoon. Okay, I have the Gebhardt GPR here. And I put it all the pieces out here. I'm going to construct the machine, put it all together, show you how it works. Basically, what I have here is I have the red end, which needs to connect with the red end. The two reds come together in order to assemble this. I'm going to take here, push in the little tabs. At this point, very simple. Wrap the cable. With the BNC connector together, turn until you get the lock. I will do exactly the other side the same way. Black end to black end. All right. That, for the most part, is the assembly. Of course, you know the batteries are down here on the bottom. Tab on each side, the batteries pull out. Push the batteries in all the way. Do not half click it or it will not work. It must click in on both sides, left and right. Otherwise, you will not get a good connection and even though it may turn on, it will go out and then you will lose your connection. I'm using this example here because we have a fresh plastic tank that has gone on the ground. The holder for the Android tablet comes with a little screw up on the top. Simply remove this screw. It is meant to hold the Android tablet. The Gephardt comes with a tablet PC. In order to turn the tablet PC on, there's usually a little button located somewhere on the top. Push that, the tablet will come on, slide it into place, put your screw in, it will hold it. Okay, once it is on, we will unlock the screen. On the screen, you will have your little footprint here, push the footprint, you will come into your first screen of the software to start. Turn on the gamepad unit itself. We are going to push the multifunction button. All of the lights are going to light. Then they're all going off. After the system has booted, the lights will come back again. At this point, I have two lights. In order to get the third light on, which is the red means stop, the unit is not running. The green says it is ready to operate. Over here we have a yellow light, which will state that we have a Bluetooth connection. In order to build our Bluetooth connection, what we're going to want to do is push on our file, which is in the top right. I want to select the option of new. Here in the middle of the screen, you're going to see how would you like to conduct the new scan, either with automatic, manual, then you will have a cancel button and an OK button. I'm going to say automatic, push the OK button. Here it says searching for appropriate Bluetooth devices. Here I have Bluetooth connection. And down here I have now a yellow light. All three lights are illuminated. With these lights illuminated, it says the unit is completely ready to operate. In order to begin my scan, all I have to do at this point is push the multifunction button. As of this moment, the green light will blink. The red light is off, meaning it is no longer stopped. With the green light blinking, it is transferring data. The yellow light indicates that I have a successful Bluetooth connection. On the screen, as a simple test, you can look at the data coming in from the screen. To stop the scan, I'm simply going to push the multifunction button again. As you see, all lights are illuminated. Okay, as you have just finished explaining about the connection, we want to ensure that our depth gauge is properly set. On one, it means we are going to detect a very quick time, which means a very shallow depth. If I change this all the way to the maximum, which is 15 plus 1, 
actually 16 as we will refer to it. This will be the most depth possible and we can see as far down as 40 meters in optimum soil. This would be like granite or sandstone, but very clear soil, minimal mineralization. So for this example, I'm going to set the depth control to about 3, and then I'm going to check my antenna. I want to extend my antennas out to about 3 notches. So, one moment. So I have section one, section two, and section three. For this particular operation, this will be about my middle range. So here would only be two sections. Here is three sections, but I can go and pull all the way out to five. When extending the antennas, you can hold it in between your legs down here, or Another function that I like to do is set it on top of my shoulder. I'll put it on top of my shoulder and then I'll take this arm. I'm going to swing it in towards me. So I still have control of the unit up here on top. Now I can take my hands and I can extend out the antennas to my desired length right here. So if I wanted four or five, I could extend it or I can pull it back in and collapse the antenna to its desired length. This makes it much easier especially if you're a single person, you're going to do a demonstration. The unit is lightweight. This only weighs, even with the tablet, um, maybe three kilos. Very lightweight. The unit is now ready to operate. If the arms here are too loose, you'll want to tighten the nuts here just a little bit. Give it a little more friction. And then they will stay into place. I'm going to do a short scan of this here. We have a freshly buried uh, water tank here. To start the scan, I'm going to push the multifunction button one time. The light will blink. I'm going to hold the unit comfortably in my hand. I push the unit. It is blinking. I look at my screen. I have the signal coming in. I am going to hold this as steady as possible over the object and I'm using this example because it's fresh it's right at the surface when I'm done with my scan I will push the button the scan will stop alright so what I've done is I've turned on the headphones I'm gonna move them here near the microphone this is now transmitting you can hear the difference and the break in the signal. As I approach this metal plate, I get a different signal. So turning on the unit, I will start again. So with the headphones, I hope that was somewhat self-explanatory. As you saw, I started over there. I walked across this little metal plate, and you're able to hear it right in the headphones. What you are hearing is the variation in signal as you walk over an object. So, putting this together as one complete package, you have the audio, you have a visual. For the deeper objects, it's going to be more difficult to hear the signal differences, for the objects that are closer to the surface, it's going to be much easier to make that connection to say, here is an item. So as an additional tool, if you are not looking at the Android tablet as you are scanning, you can also hear what is below you.
as I look at the data here, I know that I traveled over this pipe. And I can see here in the scan the anomaly. It's a plastic pipe. It has no actual signature. As we can see in the data, you can see this here. But sometimes if you change a color, you can see the anomaly here. Pull a different color. Sometimes you can see it clear right here. And to see the signal that it reads, if I move right over here, the signal will also show up on the right hand side of the screen. But at this point, if I say here I have a depth reading of 3.8 meters, here it's zero, I can pretty much in the middle say around, oh, this looks like 1.6, 1.7 meters is the depth of this particular anomaly. As I'm sitting here and I'm checking the depth, my one object at 3.8 meters was my middle mark. By changing my knob here to position number one or position number two, I will be able to better check my depth for a more accurate result in this particular soil. So if I was at three, now by going down to one, for example, I should just see the top of the anomaly which would give me a much more accurate depth reading because the lines will be closer together. So I'm going to do that now. One more scan over the area. Now, since I have changed the depth, I can see my anomaly here much better, knowing that at this point here I have 1.2 and 2.5, I can pretty much come in here at 1. Point, let's say 8 would probably be a good guess. Here is my very close to as accurate as I can get at depth because the object actually starts, I stand corrected, more here at about the 1.4, 1.5 meter mark. This is the top of my anomaly. Another factor to deal with on the depth is up here on the top where it says, for example, here granite dry. If I select a different s function, sand dry, I'm going to end up with a different depth. Here, for example, is 1.4 meters. But if I came over here to shale saturated, now I have 0 0.8 meters. And to say something like air, now I'm at 2.7 meters depending on your soil, is also going to depend on how deep you can see into the ground. If you had selected the most difficult type of ground, which would be clay wet, now we're at 0 0.6, the values will decrease. There are going to be some soils which we are going to have problems looking into. But that's regardless of which equipment you use. Where can we get errors? How do we make mistakes? Well, I push the button and I start to move it into position. I hit it on the ground, I move it, hit it on the other side, I wobble the machine. These are all mistakes. If I walk with the machine and I start and I sway the machine, or I'm coming on an object and I swing around the machine. This will give me an error signal. As I'm walking with this, I must be very smooth. If I tap on the ground or I change the angle, it's going to change that. Certain items that are not an error, if I change the depth while I'm still in the process. I can do that. If I start to come around an object and I'm going right up to an object and then I back up and swing it around, that's going to be a mistake. So take the objects that you have, recognize that they are there, move around them, make note in your screen of where the object is, this way, when you are away from any other objects, for example here, 
this is where you're scanning. If I start to approach a wall, a fence, a building, an automobile, these are all items that can give me a false error. Remember to be smooth, relax, be comfortable. This is what's going to help give you the best results. For the following of this video, we're going to show you examples, more examples of different items, what they look like. I'm using the same technique in every item. I'm going to relax. I'm going to walk. I'm going to be straight. And remember, safety first. If you have something in your way, move it out of the way. So, we know we're not supposed to swing. What about the distance in between the antennas? Well, if I pull it in here, I'm still going to have a transmitter. I'm still going to have a receiver. But if I'm here, I can no longer walk. I'm going to kick it. What is the optimum distance? Well, we have one transmitter and we have one receiver. What you see in the signal is behind you. This is the receiver. So as soon as this transmit, this is receiving. This is the one signal that is receiving your picture. Keep it the same height. You don't want to have it so that you walk into it or kick it. That's not right. You'll have another error. Optimum distance should be comfortable. Set it out above the ground as close as possible is optimum. Everyone will have a different height, the body height. They'll have to change it. If you have taller grasses, you can lift it up. You can bring it in so that you can comfortably walk in between. This way you will not hit the antennas. If they're right on the ground and you walk now, it is very easy to accidentally kick the antenna.